In design, changes are inevitable, but hardly ever easy to predict. The direct modeling capabilities in Fusion 360 provide you with ultimate flexibility and precision when you need to change a design, regardless of whether the model is comprised entirely of parametric features or if it has no feature history. From the beginning, Fusion 360 was created to be a direct modeling tool, enabling you to make powerful edits without the constraints of typical parametric CAD software, like SOLIDWORKS. In this lesson, I'll discuss how using direct modeling enables you to make design decisions when you want, not when the CAD system forces you. There are two distinct methods to access direct modeling within Fusion 360. I'll start by showing how to create a base feature within the direct modeling environment. Later on, I'll show you how to deactivate the history timeline manually, allowing you to make edits to your assemblies without having to worry about time-consuming assembly errors. Here, you'll see a new design without any geometry, and by default, parametrics are enabled. To jump into direct modeling as quickly as possible, I'll create a base feature by navigating to the Create menu and selecting the icon at the bottom of the list. A base feature is a way to create conceptual models and make edits without tracking the history until you exit the base feature environment. This base feature can contain any number of bodies, parts, and edits to existing features. You'll notice that a base feature appears in the history tree and the model toolbar updates with a finish base feature icon. The base feature behaves similarly to standard parametric modeling. I'll create a sketch Give it some dimensions and then extrude it to a depth. And when I do, you'll notice that although the geometry was added, no feature is created. So, if I click on a face to make an edit, you'll see that individual parameters cannot be changed by editing a dimension. To edit geometry in a base feature, you use the Modify commands. I'll select a face and click Modify, and the Offset Faces dialog box appears. I'll move a face and click OK. Now, with a quick edit made to this shape, I'll show the original sketch in the browser. You'll see that the sketch hasn't updated, signifying that it's no longer associated with this geometry. With the Base feature, you still have the ability to create very precise geometry using all of the available Fusion 360 modeling tools, but parametric solving will be disabled. Next, I'd like to add some fillets to the corners of this part. And another along the bottom edge. In traditional parametric CAD systems, all of these fillets are treated as a single fillet. This means that if you want to make an edit to a single edge, you must first locate the fillet feature, edit it, remove the edge in the selection set, and create a new feature with the new size. With Fusion 360's direct modeling mode, this same procedure is made much simpler. I'll just double-click on a fillet in the browser tree, select the fillet I want to edit, Drag the arrow to specify a new diameter and press Enter. The fillet is added and the geometry updates automatically. This also works when deleting a feature. I'll delete this fillet and you can see that it heals to repair the face and return to the previous state. It's that simple. The Move tool in Direct Modeling mode also adds flexibility to the design. I'll select it from the toolbar and here in the dialog box, you'll see the option to move bodies, faces, or sketch entities. I'll select Face, and below you'll see options for Tweak and Move. The Tweak method provides you with a manipulator when a face is selected. This manipulator allows you to rotate, push-pull, and scale, similar to what you'd get in edit form for sculpting. The pivot point for this manipulator can be adjusted as well. I'll select the icon for Set Pivot in the dialog box and you can see that the manipulator snaps to the cursor and can be moved anywhere on this face. 
I'll move it to the bottom edge. Then use the rotate drag handle to apply a draft to the face. When I do, the edits are made seamlessly and without the need for dimensions or individual features. Before moving on, I'd like to show you one more feature of the direct modeling environment, Edit Face. The Edit Face tool converts the selected face to a T-spline face, which includes edges and vertices for smooth geometry manipulation. In the Modify flyout, I'll select Edit Face. Keep in mind that this is only available in direct modeling mode. I'll begin editing by selecting a face, and a T-spline appears on the selected face, and the rest of the geometry becomes transparent. Faces, edges, and points of this T-spline can be selected, and once a selection is made, a manipulator appears allowing sculpted edits to this face. I'll make a quick edit. And when I click OK, the previous face is replaced with the T-spline, adding a smooth, seamless face to the geometry. Combining T-spline editings with solid modeling in this direct modeling mode is very useful when it comes to making changes to a design, especially when the history-free model is coexisting with the history-based models, giving you more flexibility and control in your workflows. Let me switch to another model to show how direct modeling and standard parametric modeling differ from one another. Here, you'll see an assembly that has been created using parametric edits and contains a complete history tree. If I want to edit the assembly parametrically, such as making an edit to the sketch of this central component, what will happen? Watch as I make a small edit to this sketch. And when the assembly rebuilds, you'll see the model fail and display many error messages. This type of error can be a headache and often requires you to manually locate and fix every error in order to stabilize the model. With Fusion 360, you can convert individual components to direct modeling features, preventing the headaches that result from errors such as these. To convert this individual component to a direct modeling feature, I'll locate the Extrude feature in the timeline, right-click, and select Convert to DM feature. When I do, the model rebuilds and a base feature replaces the extrude feature in the timeline. Now when I select a face and launch press pull, I can quickly make edits without worrying about the model failing. And because there is no tracking or rebuilding required, edits are extremely fast and easy. This method of converting a single component to direct modeling is very powerful. All other components in your assembly retain their parametric design history while allowing you to make all the edits you need right away. Before wrapping up, there is one more thing I'd like to mention. If design history isn't critical and you require maximum flexibility while editing, you can quickly convert the entire assembly to direct modeling in one simple step. Simply right-click the top-level assembly and select Do Not Capture Design History. This converts the entire model to direct editing, allowing you to make unlimited edits to the geometry without any parametric solving. As you can see, direct modeling is a very powerful tool in Fusion 360. With history-less edits to your geometry, you can jump right into making edits to the model without needing to maintain parametric solving. This provides you the freedom to explore ideas when you don't need to maintain rigid parametric constraints.